So the title of the exhibition, From Jura to Picasso, yes. refers to the chronology. So yes, yes. Jura is the earliest work and mm. Picasso must be the most modern. That's right. That's right. This, the, the Jura is from 1504 and this is from 1948. So you mentioned before that we might now be sitting amongst possibly the only permanent public collection of Western art in China. Why is Western art so rare in China? In, in part, it, it was because China was cut off from the West. I mean, if you go into the, the, art, the, the library at Peking University, you'll see that they have a relatively small collection of art books. There, there are a number of bookstores in Shanghai uh, and, and, and also in Beijing, but more likely in Shanghai than Beijing, where you can see art books by, by Western artists. Uh, but Western art is not, is not taught very much in, in the colleges. Uh, until recently, there was very little exposure to, to the art of the West. I mean, by contrast, Chinese art has always been loved by the West. And if you go to Oxford University, to Cambridge University, to Harvard University, to Princeton, each of them has a great collection of Chinese art. But, but until now, there is no museum that I know of, no university museum that I know of in China that has anything comparable. This came from a series of, of etchings he did in the 1940s, illustrating the poetry of Góngora, the leading Spanish poet of the Renaissance. And uh, Picasso did portraits, he did 20 portraits, and then accompanying each portrait, he wrote out in hand a, a poem by Góngora. And it, it's surrounded by uh, little drawings. And for, for the museum this year, we, we already have three of these portraits, and we have three of the text pages. I, I worry that by the time that there are enough Chinese students thoroughly familiar with Western art, these Western, even these Western prints, which are relatively affordable, will, will no longer be available. I think you answered my next question, which is why is it important for a Chinese institution to have a collection of art from a foreign culture when China clearly has its own rich tradition of its own, of its own art? Well, I think one of the things that has made Chinese culture so rich and so important is that China has always learned from, from other countries, from other civilizations. When, when you study Tang Dynasty, Song Dynasty, Yuan Dynasty, uh, you, you see how the Chinese were able to absorb the art of the Middle East, for example. Great deal of influence of Persian artists upon Chinese artists during the Yuan Dynasty. And I think, uh, I, I remember years ago visiting Chongqing and visiting the Art Academy there. It was a very important art school in China. And I noticed that the artists were, were very interested in, in American artists. They, they, they wanted to paint in a, in a more Western style. So some of the greatest of Chinese artists of, of 20th century, like Wu Guangzhong, uh, for example, Lin Feng Mian, were Chinese artists who, who studied in France or studied uh, Western artworks and were able to bring to their own work a, a, a remarkable fusion of both native Chinese and also Western influences. And this is why they are some of the greatest artists of the 20th century. One of the most recognizable things about Picasso paintings is his signature, but there's yes, no signature yes. here. Yes, what, one of the reasons I'm able to afford them, I mean, I'm, I'm a college professor buying things on my college salary and my pension, uh, is that the, 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 practically all of the prints that we have, most of the modern prints, don't have a signature. In this case, Picasso made about 235, there were 235 copies of, of versions of this. I mean, they're not copies, they're all made from the same uh, metal plate. But they, they went into a book collection and Picasso did not sign the individual prints. If the print had a Picasso signature, the, the price would be, well, it would be out of my range and virtually out of the range of every single friend I have put together. So it sounds like you're pretty optimistic. In the future, you think that there may be more permanent collections of Western art in China? I think there will be more collections. I think there will be more people collecting. But I think in the future, they will have fewer and fewer 
uh, choices, I mean, because there is only a limited amount of work that was done uh, in, in the 19th century and, and, and prior, uh, so that you know mo most collectors now buy by contemporary because they know, they know that there's that there's something available there. Uh, they they will buy established Chinese painters, for example, hoping that they have got a, a real and not a fake one. So many of the exhibits here are worth thousands of pounds. What do you say to the rather predictable criticism that so much money on a painting could also be spent on textbooks or other equipment for the university? It, 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 it's not a question of, of, of choosing between buying artworks. Mo most of the great collections that exist in university museums in America were, were not bought by the universities. The universities don't budget the, the buying of art. They, they were donated by alumni by former students who went to Harvard, who went to Princeton, who went to Oxford, and then they donated their collections to the universities from, from which they had learned so much. You know, per, perhaps somebody going to Harvard had learned about Chinese art and then collected Chinese art and then decided to give Chinese art to Harvard. Uh, the, 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 the benefactor Ar who founded this museum, Arthur Sackler, uh, was, was not an artist, uh, he, 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 he had a business, but he loved China and he loved art and he decided that China should have a museum, that the University of Peking should have this museum, the Arthur Sackler Museum.